It started to feel like gaming as an art form has really started to grow and change over the course of the last couple years, with Nintendo trying to pump out bigger exclusives for the Nintendo Switch, things like Game Pass taking over the entire Microsoft ecosystem, and now Sony feels like what they're wanting to do is basically release the most possible AAA games, stuff like God of War and Uncharted that's going to make your eyes pop out of your freaking head, and also have immersive experience, things like the happy triggers on the PlayStation 5. I've been most interested to watch the evolution of what Sony's attempting to do with the PlayStation brand, but what they've just said today seems to have people a bit nervous, and I want to talk about that. What's up, Gabe Streamcast guy here. Now, we're going to be dissecting some interesting numbers and statements that have just come out from Sony themselves, but these are things that are a bit up to interpretation. Some of this stuff is a bit weird to try and analyze, but I'm going to do my best. If you would, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, go watch my Dying Light video. It's been fun. It's been exploding. It's been very fun to see all the nice comments on it and stuff. Also, there's currently a giant ice storm. Uh, I live in Texas. I might lose power. If I randomly vanish, I promise I'm not dead. I'm probably just a temporary popsicle. But now, let's take a look at this. So, recently we just had the financial quarter results from Sony. This is basically where every four months months, they sit down and they talk with their investors in very direct, very explicit numbers about what's currently going on with the PlayStation brand and what is about to happen with the PlayStation brand. Now, some things that are very interesting to note is, most importantly, the PlayStation 5 is selling good, but not good enough. Now, there is a reason for that. So essentially what's happened is that right now, the PlayStation 5 is underselling because of manufacturing shortages. Basically, everybody is trying to get a PlayStation 5. Everybody wants one. The pre-order sales are through the freaking roof. People are still trying to get in line and pick them up whenever possible, but still just physically gluing these things together takes so much time. It costs so many resources that Sony is basically saying, guess what? We're trying to keep up, but there's simply just way more demand than there currently is supply. But what else is interesting about this is that now that they have nearly 20 million PlayStation 5s, they're up to 48 million PlayStation Plus subscribers, there's 111 million monthly active users in the PlayStation ecosystem, there's a lot of PlayStation gamers. But where things start to get a bit more juicy is when we start to talk about this PlayStation Bungie acquisition. Now, when I first heard this, I was a bit stunned because honestly, this just feels strange. Uh, if I could be brutally honest here for a sec, I'm not the biggest Destiny fan. Uh, that's what Bungie now is best known for, is the fact that they make this huge, incredibly popular space shooter that does have microtransactions and loot boxes and huge raids to participate in. I think that Destiny is a very, very successful game, but my curiosity is, what the heck are they going to do next? Well, apparently, what Sony wants to do, and this is their words, this is not speculation, they're basically saying that they want to use it to teach teach the other PlayStation Studios how to make better use of online platforms, and they want to use them to basically make new games with Bungie themselves. Now, here's where I feel like people are starting to get the most nervous, is the idea of PlayStation trying to make more online games not a downside. I feel like a lot of us are big fans of games like Killzone. It'd be nice to see another Killzone come back. One I've seen kicked around a lot is people begging for more games like SOCOM. It'd be great to see SOCOM come back. And additionally, personally, I think it'd be nice if it had a heavy online component, something that lets us play with people and do missions and have one of those classic military strategy experiences, but with online co-op. But where people have started to get the most nervous is this very strange statement that was put out. Now, what they've decided to do is they want to have 10 live service games up and running in the next four years. Now, they're saying this uh, in February of 2022. By March 2026, they want to have 10 full-blown live service games. They're also going to try and do things like grow games and franchises beyond just PlayStation consoles. Obviously, they note here that God of War has been a huge success on PC. There's actually been some talks about the fact that it's one of the highest selling games on Steam, so big congrats to those developers. But this is where people are sort of getting the most nervous. The most terrified if I could actually be a bit more like crazy with it because 
a lot of times the idea of live service games, it completely sucks. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. A lot of live service games basically launch completely broke. When I think about games as a service, I think about launching a game that's purposely undone. It's about more patches, more updates, more DLC, more paid content to try and get the minimal amount of fun out of the product. I hate live service games. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that every single live service game is immediately trash because some of my favorite games like Final Fantasy XIV, which is a big, persistent, living, breathing world with raids and dungeons and crafting systems, that's technically a live service game. The problem is that for every good live service game, there's 50 that are complete trash. Like straight up, I could just mention stuff like Ubisoft. They had a live service battle royale. It's dead. Instead of doing another Splinter Cell, they're trying to make Splinter sell cell phone games, except, yep, that's also dead. What about Battlefields 2042? Oh wait, that's also dead. The biggest problem I have with live service games is that they require a tremendous amount of love and care and attention and money. It requires the studios behind it, and a lot of times the publishers that are funding it, to just constantly dump money into it until it becomes a big hit. And a lot of companies don't want to do that. A lot of times it feels like if something isn't an instantaneous Fortnite that's making billions of dollars, it gets caned before it can grow. And this feels like what they're trying to do the most. Like, the fact that they're talking about growing games and franchises, it makes it feel like they want to try and have a lot of multiple coexisting games as a service projects. Like, this is the weirdest one, but there is a bright side to this that I feel like is very often being overlooked, which is this line, this line right here at the very end. Double their first party game revenue by fiscal year 2025. Now, what that's basically saying is that in the next three years, they want to be selling double the amount of games. Now, in my mind, what this means is two separate things at once. They want to probably make a lot more PlayStation 5s, that way people are able to buy more PlayStation 5 games. Duh, that's pretty apparent. But the other half of this comes down to the fact that clearly they want more exclusive games. This is straight up every exclusive game that's coming out just in the next four months that we have release dates for. Things like Sifu, Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, Forspoken, things obviously like, you know, uh, Babylon's Fall, which is again a games as a service project, but it's starting to make me think that this is what they're trying to do the most. It feels like what PlayStation wants to do is line themselves up for success, to make sure that people are drowning in the good content. A lot of the concern I've seen uh, pretty much all over the internet right now is just this idea of what's going to happen with this push towards live service projects. Does that mean that we're going to see some sort of living, breathing ecosystem being created for God of War Ragnarok or whatever comes after Ragnarok? Is there going to be constant spin-offs, expansions, paid skins, extra cosmetics in every single game? Because the idea of a living project to me means that it's never going to be done. Even in the best case scenario, these games create a lot of burnout. Right now, Sony has a very specific recipe for success. And you know what? I'm just going to say it. We all know what it is. Incredibly good AAA story-focused experiences. They make some of the best adventures with the best characters and a lot of times the very best graphics. The idea of them trying to branch out and do stuff that feels so outside their wheelhouse, I feel like this is going to lead to a lot of acquisitions, a lot of experiments, and probably a lot of failures. I understand the concern that people feel, but right now I'm going to try and remain optimistic. If we're being incredibly open-minded right now, I feel like there is a lot of potential for this to be cool, but I feel like it's probably going to require more acquisitions. I mean, when I think about the idea of Sony trying to put out so much more product at once, so many more games, so many more spinoffs, so many more big projects, it feels like it's going to take a lot more help. I'm going to be as optimistic as I can be. Right now, we just have these loose charts and promises to investors, but it does sort of basically let us behind the curtain of what we may be seeing soon, at least over the course of the next few years with this beginning of the PlayStation 5 generation. 
But what do you think? Does it sound weird to hear Sony talking about these games as a service projects in a positive light? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And have you been able to find a PlayStation 5? Because it sounds like even Sony themselves is not able to keep up with just how hyped you all are. Thanks so much for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. I'll be honest, the entire time I'm filming this video, I'm afraid that I'm about to lose power. But I, I survived. I did it. I, I haven't lost the lights yet. All right, now let's edit this before it freaking lights out. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.